Good evening and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Mr. Murli Dharan. He's the General Secretary of the National Platform for Rights of the Disabled. Welcome, Mr. Murli Dharan. Yesterday, the Finance Minister presented the union budget. For the fourth consecutive year in a row, the budget neglects and excludes persons with disability. So can you tell us a little bit about why is it that persons with disabilities and also so many disability rights activists are so unhappy and so disappointed at the latest budget? Disappointment, yes, it's it's a huge disappointment. Actually, it's not small; it's, it's a huge disappointment. See, we were looking for allocations, especially after the passage of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act in 2016, which is a very very positive act in the sense that it's a act based on the right rights based framework. The various provisions uh, they are they contain the act to implement those provisions. Adequate budgetary support is required. The act. As such, doesn't contain uh, financial p p this thing, uh, this thing. But so, budgetary prov uh, provisions are allocations are required for the implementation of the act. This, as far as that is concerned, it has been a huge disappointment, because unless those unless um, uh, allocations are made, those provisions cannot be. This this will just remain on paper. The act will remain on paper. This is one of the things. See the various schemes that are there. Uh, uh, this. Uh, schemes for implementation of persons with disabilities act that is there like this actually flows from the 1995 act mm -hmm. this is not a new scheme it's, it's there from 95 onwards so the allocations for that has actually is only increased marginally mm -hmm. around 200 uh, 300 crores are actually and now now this thing is there so is now all those schemes in accessible india campaign this government after coming to power has made various announcements actually mm -hmm. it's been huge on rhetoric and less on uh, implementation at the ground level. Now, this budget, last year they talked about making 500 uh, railway stations actually uh, providing lifts and escalators and all the uh, elevators and escalators in 500 stations. This this time they said it to 600 railway stations. Now, what implementation part, what the Prime Minister has said in the, the annexure of the budget speech, it says that around 300 odd stations have been, I am not correct figure, but it's about 300 odd. But the whether this is actually after the last last budget, mm -hmm. or or includes all stations which were the earlier also their escalators were there earlier also, mm -hmm. it's not clear about that. Mm -hmm. That apart, this money would not be suffi sufficient to uh, do these things. Railway accessibility is it's not in terms of providing lifts and escalators alone. Mm -hmm. This is just one one part of the solution. And uh, you see, reaching to the coach is one issue. Boarding the boarding the coach is another issue. Mm -hmm. The uh, height between the platform and the coach is such that a disabled normal disabled person cannot board the coach this is one thing there are access issues access issues also differ from disability to disability mm -hmm. you're talking in terms of only those with physical impairment or wheelchair users mm -hmm. but there are people people who are blind mm -hmm. for them what are the, what are the measures that you're taking for them for the deaf what are the measures you're taking mm -hmm. them this is these are these are all things and along and this budget speech also the uh, ab about the access uh, this thing is talked about making uh, public transport again this, this has been a long 1995 onwards we are talking about making public transport accessible mm -hmm. but at the procurement level at the procurement level when when you, when you procuring buses for instance mm -hmm. uh, transport when pro procuring buses are those buses accessible on the one hand social security uh, the government is actually withdrawing from all these things there is a huge squeeze on these things and the amount of pension that is given given that indira gandhi national disability pension that is given for the last so many years it has been retained at 300 mm -hmm. the government has not been increasing it see here one thing that has been noted is the disability is a state subject it is not on the central list in the state list so, but most most of the states have refrained from making special schemes for personal disabilities. Mm -hmm. Even in even our country also, we had an act only in 1995. Before that, there was no provision for in, in person with disabilities. Only after 1995, we started talking about disability and tried to bring it on the agenda. Even now, it is not on the agenda, mm. I would say, among the most marginalized sections. So, we have been asking for an enhancement in this pension. So now it is still at 300 and sent states are asked to contribute an equivalent if not more amount mm -hmm. but most of the states are not contributing. But after our campaign we have conducted struggles and campaigns in various states some states have increased to 1000 some say 2500 in Delhi it's 2500 
like that. So unless the state center's contribution also increases, the states are not going to contribute. So there is a squeeze in budget allocations for social sector spending. While with the passage of a bill like the RPD Act of 2016, it seems like there's some kind of movement towards a rights-based approach. Yet now they don't even be seem to be fulfilling a charity-based approach as well. Like there seems to be nothing actually in some sense with this budget. See, this law, 90, this 2016 Act also has not come about uh, uh, just because some government official thought about it, the ministry wanted it to happen. India was India is a signatory to an, uh, this thing convention called the United Nations Convention of Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Mm -hmm. We signed that in 2007. It's, it's, it's a very, very democratic, a very right-based uh, convention. It's, it's a, what is a, uh, implementing it in total in our country given our social and economic and political realities is very difficult. Our people, when signing conventions, they don't look at the need the finer print of it. Mm -hmm. So you go and sign a convention, you just earn this thing and come back. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it. We are not against it. We are for it, for convention. Mm -hmm. But you should see the background in which this convention has been framed. So now having signed the convention, there is a need for implementing uh, the provisions of the convention in your country. Mm -hmm. So you have to change the law, amend the laws or reframe new law, frame new laws on the basis of provisions of the convention. Disability rights only, this, this act alone is not enough. Mm -hmm. There are various laws in the country which need to be amended to harmonize it in, in, uh, in accordance with the provisions of the UNCRPD. Mm -hmm. Even our constitution also, Article 15.1 mm -hmm. and Article 16.2 of the Indian constitution talk about grounds on which discrimination is prohibited. It talks of caste on which discrimination is prohibited. It talks about language. It talks about religion. It talks about uh, uh, various other uh, uh, grounds on which discrimination is prohibited. But disability is not written there. Mm. The first thing that needs to be done is to include disability. Mm. I meant the constitution include disability as a prohibited ground for uh, discrimination. The 2014 election campaign when Narendra Modi was uh, the campaign, he used, uh, he was abusing his uh, uh, adversary, the Congress. He is saying these people are blind, they are deaf, they are lame. Mm. And he, he didn't use it one time. He is not a slip of tongue or in the uh, midst of something he said that. He used in two, two different meetings, one in Varanasi, one in Chennai. And Chennai it so happened that the person who was translating his speech from uh, Hindi to or English to English or Hindi to Tamil, local language was a person himself was a disabled person. Mm -hmm. so he translated different, but what, what, whatever it might be, it is not because their perception has changed. Mm -hmm. He may be using the term Divyang now, that is, and that is, and that is another extreme. Mm -hmm. From use, using it terms to abuse people with disability, now he is seeking to connect them with God. You connect them with God, <laughs> you say Divyang, but implementation, you give them some rights. Mm -hmm. That's what we are asking for. That's all we have time for at News Click today. Thank you and keep watching.